Thanks, guys. Uh, welcome to today's event. I hope you're having a great weekend. Uh, good morning. Um, let's go ahead and get underway. My name is Jeff Gibby. I'm going to be kicking off the session today. And I always do so, as you know, by reading my favorite legal disclaimer. So today's recommendation or today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the company software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by uh, traders who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, and any uh, information provided in connection with the company. Emmanuel, I, I'm glad you can hear me. And I'm glad you can see that uh, very, very important legal disclaimer as well. Today we do have a very, very special guest, uh, uh, somebody, you know, I always tell you guys, one of the things that I enjoy most about my job is being able to work with some of the best traders in the industry. Rob Hoffman is certainly probably the epitomizes that. So you're here for a good session. You're going to get a good session. And Rob has won more live in-person real money competitions than any trader on the planet. Um, and we had, as a company, the great pleasure of uh, spending probably about a year working with Rob to kind of perfect his setups in Metastock. He had already perfected his setups. We just wanted to perfect them in Metastock. And so we had a, a lot of time together. Uh, a couple of things I can tell you about Rob. He's very detail oriented. He's very focused on uh, kind of the details. And uh, you'll see that uh, in kind of when he starts to talk about kind of the work that he does. And uh, just just a real honor to have him here today. Rob, let's go ahead and bring you on. All right, Jeff, I'm here with you. Well, welcome. How are you doing this morning? Doing great. It's great to be here with you. Great to be with everybody, and thank you very much uh, for that warm introduction. Um, I, I'm ready to go, and I see a lot of people here this morning, so that's exciting. So I'm ready to get going when you are, sir. Okay. I, uh, I should have just sent you the presentation uh, screen. Yep, I have it. Everybody should be able okay. to see the screen up there. We'll make sure real quick before we get going. Can everybody see my screen there? We're running day and swing trading setups using Metastock. It's coming through for me. Outstanding. Uh, yep. Mary says she can see it as well. Yep, I see that. Okay, wonderful gang. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you around the world. Thank you so very much, Jeff. It is great to be here with you. It's great to be here with BMS Metastock as whole. Uh, you know, the the entire team at Metastock from the uh, you know top down, just top notch people, really great people to work with and deal with. It's a wonderful team. So it's a pleasure to be here with you guys, and thank you so very much. Uh, take a little bit of your Saturday with me. So we got a lot to cover. So I'm going to hit some of it uh, very fast. And the good news is. I believe this will be recorded for you, and also the uh, information that I'm going to share with you will be housed within the uh, indicators within Metastock. So um, if you miss something, don't worry. The indicators are there for you already. So with that being said, just a quick reminder. I know Jeff uh, discussed a little bit about risk, but I just want to remind people, you know, always consult a registered financial representative in a risk trading plan before ever taking any trade or any investment, real estate, uh, you know, any kind of investment of any sort. Um, you know, consult professionals. Uh, also, if we talk about hypotheticals today during a Q&A session, just remember that they are hypotheticals. That's why I like to deal in the real world with real live trading, uh, like in my trading room, for instance, because then it's real. It's not hypothetical, um, and uh, so just always keep that in mind. Also, there's a great website out there. Uh, a lot of people talk about options these days. Some people put now, as you can imagine, some misleading information about how you can never lose money with options and so on and so forth. Um, and of course, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of misinformation. So there's a great website you can go to, um, optionsclearing.com, about publications, character risks, to learn some of the real deal and some of the real risks associated with options, OK? Uh, and a telephone number for you. So with that being said, thank you. Looking forward to going and being here with you. Now, this morning, we did this. Uh, uh, Thursday evening together. So this is an updated version of that. I'm going to show you, um, you know, how we used it Friday morning. Uh, I was uh, shorting the market, rightfully so, um, and made some money there in my live trade room. So we're going to show you how the Metastock indicators went ahead and uh, were, were working. Um, also earlier this year, I did go ahead and win a few more trading competitions over in uh, Italy. So great stuff, and we'll we'll talk about some of those strategies. Here's uh, Thursday of this week. Jeff was kind of showing 
showing this to you uh, guys here. All these are different variations of my indicators, momentum shift with trend, reverse inventory re, uh, uh, retracement bars, inventory retracement bars, um, and uh, we're going to also talk about momentum shift breakouts today as well. So that's what kind of happened. That's what we were focusing on there on Thursday. And then Friday morning, of course, I was uh, shorting, and you can see why I'd be wanting to look for shorts. Lots of great sell signals uh, going ahead and firing off on uh, Friday morning. So, of course, I was executing shorts in the trading room. So, we'll talk more about that, what all these things mean, all these pretty little uh, alerts uh, that Metastock makes in just a few minutes. Um, so, first, you know, who the heck am I and, you know, why should you listen to me? I, I used to get that sometimes at these uh, trade shows, people walk up to me and uh, it's like, it's a great question. You know, the difference is that we really trade. You know, I've one of these trading competitions around the world. Uh, um, you know, domestically and internationally. Uh, hence, I'm, I'm asked to uh, speak on behalf of different exchanges and some of their products. Uh, I've been featured in numerous articles around the world. In fact, uh, you know, IRB, we're going to talk more about in a minute. Uh, Modern Trader Magazine, Stocks and Commodities Magazine, very fine magazines, um, international magazines, uh, just last month, uh, Spanish Magazine, I was featured on the cover, Italian uh, you know, financials, and so on and so forth. So um, the, today we are going to be covering, I, was, uh, I did an article previously and covered in five different languages in an in international magazine called Trader Magazine, and today we're going to talk a little bit about those IRBs, and we're going to cover reverse IRBs as well uh, later in the presentation. Presentation. So that's going to be great. But this is the real reason you guys are here today because if you're a day trader or a swing trader, these uh, strategies apply to you. Um, and so uh, these these uh, these are trading competitions that I won around the world here in blue. Uh, the black ones are ones here domestically in the United States. Okay, so lots of great stuff. So in summary, I really trade. <laughs> so that's one of those things what makes this different. But I like to remind uh, people that I'm just like you. I went ahead and I started learning the markets. You know, about two thirds of my life ago when I was a teenager. Uh, and these are the actual books. They're still part of my book collection to this day um, and so I'm very excited um, you know to go through that journey for, for you know more than two-thirds of my life now and then you know for more than half my life focus in here had I had two full-time jobs a a part-time job. I had a son at home that I was raising uh, who fortunately became a really productive member of society, uh, United States Marine. I'm very proud of him. And, uh, you know, so then I ended up getting rid of the full-time jobs, going to part-time job, and, uh, you know, doing the trading full-time there. So the uh, bottom line is I had determination. But had I known then what I know now, my life would have been infinitely better faster and with way less heartache. Uh, I've never forgotten where I was and you know that's why I'm here with you today to share some of those things that I learned over the years. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the problems I had and that most traders that I find are having now. This was me as well. So what I want to get you guys to start focusing on today is thinking more like a hunter, not a hunted. And again, this is whether you're a day trader or a swing trader. It's completely the same. Um, and so let's just talk about buy side mistakes here, since a lot of people uh, focus on long side trading. You know, the three most common mistakes I see are the uh, uh, buyers being distracted from wanting to buy, the sellers are being given false hope who shorted down below, they're hoping it's going to go down, but then it keeps going against them, and stopping out late buyers who needed big fast bars. Let's just talk about a couple of these for a moment. How many of you uh, are, you're right, you're absolutely right in your analysis. The market's starting to go up and you're like, hey, I think I should buy this. But then it starts to pull back a little bit. You're like, oh, no, 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 that, that could be another one of those lo you know, losing trades, right? Good thing I didn't jump into it. But then it goes higher, it's like, oh, maybe I should have bought that. But then it goes ahead and pulls back, oh, see, now it's going to roll over for sure. But then it goes even higher, and you're like, oh, I should have bought it. And then all of a sudden it goes boom, 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 starts spiking up, get a big green bar going there. You jump in, and then sure enough, that's when it finally turns around. Does it ever feel like that? Any of you uh, feel like you're right? Your analysis was correct. It's just that your timing was off. How many of you here feel like that today? 
Sure. See, that's what we're talking about. You know, we have this, it's this, this issue with people, you know, it's it, these, these pullbacks within the trend go ahead and distract people from wanting to buy, okay? And then, you, then they need those big green bars to finally, uh, to, you know, take the trade, and that's when bad things happen. Um, and so then the other thing is the shorting. Uh, you know, traders will short below, so the mar but then the market goes against them. But then it pulls back a little bit. They're like, yeah, yeah, come back down, make some money on my short. But then it goes up more against them. Then it pulls back down. Okay, come on now, come on, let's go, let's go. But then it goes up, and then they get that big green. That's when they they were short, and they get spiked out of their trade. Okay, so those are some of the things that happen to retail uh, you know customers very regularly. Okay, then there's the psychological side. We have two types of fear, fear of losses and fear of missing out, okay? Uh, many of us, we, we, we don't get into a trade because we're afraid it's going to be another one of those losses, or we're afraid of going ahead and missing out, and um, basically, uh, so we jump into a trade even though it's a risk at that particular time, okay? The uh, greed, uh, you know, I have bills to pay, just a little bit more, uh, I want a little bit more money, so we take a trade that we know we should be trailing and getting out of, there's our target up there, we get into it, and when we're like, I just want a little bit more, I want a little bit more, I need to make a little bit more money, got to pay some bills, whatever, we, and then we hold, you know, we try to hold on to the trade too long, and then we watch it turn around and go against us. So these are some of the things that happen. Then feelings, you know, we don't have any trade, any indicator, any strategy to go ahead and support our trade, but we just have a feeling, and so we elect to take the trade, uh, the feeling. That actually got me in trouble in one of my trading competitions back months ago. I was actually winning it. I was following my indicators. I was making really good money with a very small size uh, over the course of my, my trading competition, and then with 12 minutes to go in the competition, I no longer had any indicators, no longer had any strategies firing off, but I had a feeling that I could make a few more bucks, and so the uh, you know th that cost me um, that competition because then I fell uh, uh, behind. Well, so the um, the moral of the story is stick with the indicators. Wait till the indicators you know fire off the opportunities. You know, step away from the feelings. Go with the facts of what the systems you know show uh, from my perspective. So, the um, those are a couple things going to keep in mind. Then I turned around, got right back on the horse in the next competition, focusing just on my indicators. And what do you think happened? I won exactly. All right. So, with that being said, here's how I dealt with these issues. Let's talk about several strategies here. Momentum shift with trend. What is this? It's a price pattern used to identify resumptions back into a trend. So, when do I use it? I use it in trending environments. Where's my entry? The close of the setup bar. Where's my exit? It's a trail and stop or next key support resistance level. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, and then where's my stop loss? Slow bleed through the 20 period exponential moving average or beyond the speed lines, which we'll show you in a moment. A couple of key points to remember. Know your entries, targets, and stop loss limits before you enter a trade. Follow your risk trading plan. We never get smarter once we're into the trades, gang. Uh, how many of you have a trading plan here today? How many of you have a trading plan? Okay, so a very, very uh, small number. Okay, so that's something we need to work on. Um, and the good news is, is uh, the, uh, Jeff is going to go ahead and show you something at the end here. There's this really great user guide, really great user manual, and um, it, it comes with it. It can kind of give you some the groundwork and some basis uh, based on my work of that can help you towards a trading plan perhaps. So all these are optimized with the Pro Trader Pack Elite within Metastock of my work. So momentum shift with trends. This is what we're looking for. All right, so we have a trend up. It's a short-term pullback against the trend. Then we start firing back off into the trend. That's where the momentum shift with trend is. Pulls back, fires back off into the direction of the trend. Pulls back, fires back off into the direction of the trend. These are called momentum shift with trends. Now, don't worry about these other ones yet. We're going to talk about those in a few minutes. Okay, momentum shift with trend. Basically, we're looking for a pullback. All right, we're looking for a pullback against the trend, and then we're looking to um, go uh, long 
at the close of this bar. Long at the close of this bar. Long at the close of this bar. Okay, so you guys get the uh, uh, the point there. What happens is the market will go ahead and fire off these signals. Uh, the Metastock program will, and they, what, they're, what they're doing is they're identifying these short-term pullbacks within what we consider to be a qualified bona fide trend, and then we're looking to execute the trades. Okay, that's what we're looking for. All right. Now let's go ahead and talk about my trailing stop methodology here for a moment. I want you to think in terms of 50, 80, 90 price. 50, 80, 90 price. Now. The, what this is designed is to preserve a percent of my profits uh, while I'm trying to give something a chance to run. So I'm trying to give something a chance to run, but if it fails and rolls around, I don't want to turn it into a loss. Many of you in this room today have done exactly that. You went ahead and, in fact, there's some schools, some very expensive schools out there, by the way, that teach you to do just that. Just put your target out there, uh, put your stop loss out there, and let it ride. Um, and so a lot of you watch the, your your, uh, your money. You were right. You made a good entry, but what happened was it didn't hit the target, falls short, turns around, rolls over, and becomes a loss. Terrible situation. So we want to give it a chance to run. But if it pulls back, we don't want it to take away all of our profits and turn into a loss. Okay. So with that being said, what we're looking to do is identify key targets out of the space on an intraday basis. I tend to use daily uh, pivots quite a bit. I'll look at the weekly and monthly pivots as well for a confluence of support or resistance. Um, I'll also look at where like the 50-day and the 200-day moving averages are, for instance. Okay. So in this case here, on this particular trade, this is a currency uh, type trade, uh, what you're looking for is this was a pivot point right up here. So that's the target. Okay. Now, this was the entry. This is the current price. This is the target. Well, as we get about 50% of the way to the target, then we want to start trailing up by about 50% of profit earned. What does that mean to us? What that means is that if it pulls back, we're still going to lock in basically 25% of the overall move. We're not going to let it turn around to become the, this loss. Okay. Now, so as we get 50% of the way to the target, we're going to trail it by about 50% of profit earned. All right. Now, once we get about 80% of the way to the target, now we're going to go ahead and trail about 80% of profit earned. So you notice we're getting more aggressive as we're getting closer to the target. Why? What's more likely to happen statistically once we get closer to a target? When this market's been going up, up, up the ladder, what's more likely to happen, gang? Is it more likely just to keep on going? Or is it more likely to, at least in the short term, your key support resistance stop and reverse? Absolutely. It's far more likely to stop and reverse. Okay? So armed with that information, as then we're getting to the target, we're trailing up about 90% of profit earned. It's, it's ridiculous from my perspective to leave it way down here where it could become a loss or even at 25% of the overall original profit earned. Now at this point, I, you know, that's my target. I want to trail that up. So it's a very progressive move. So think 50, 80, 90 price. Okay, now let's talk about momentum shift breakouts, momentum shift breakouts. So with momentum shift breakouts, what is it? It's a price pattern setup used opposite of conventional thinking as a methodology to capture resumptions. These are the things that make me different, help me win trading competitions around the world. When do I use it? I use it in trending markets. Where is my entry? It's one tick, one cent, one pip beyond the high or the low of the reversal signal. So where is my exit? It's the tr same trailing tr uh, strategy I just showed you a few moments ago. Where is the stop loss? Typically a slow bleed past the 20 period exponential moving average or beyond the slow speed line based on your risk tolerance. Again, remember your, your entries, targets, stop loss limits before the trade. That's what you have to know before you get the trade. Once we get the trade, fear and greed take over. And if we don't act how we were when we were objective about it, which before we had money at risk, we're going to make mistakes. That's why you have to have a trading plan. Again, all these are optimized with the Pro Trader Pack Elite in Metastock. So this is now what we're looking for here. We're looking for a market that pushes up, pulls back, and then starts to break back above the pullback. Okay, It pushes up, 
it pulls back and then breaks back above. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. All right, now the uh, and then like I said, typically for intraday trades, we're looking at things like a um, uh, speed line or the 20 period EMA to go ahead and have us stop. But as a day trader, we're actually using this channel. We're using this channel that comes with the um, you know uh, meta stock indicators. That is actually for swing traders what we're looking for. If it breaks down below the channel, then we take the stop loss. But otherwise. Otherwise, uh, from my perspective, I want to carry on, okay? So momentum shift breakouts basically involve a short-term pullback and then a resumption back into the trend. A pullback, then a resumption. Now, interestingly enough, see what I did with this as well. I built in some additional logic. So normally, if with most platforms, this would just go ahead and fire off a signal. Okay, uh, right over here, and it was a valid signal. Make no mistake about it in this particular case. But I, I built in some extra custom rules that have to be met for my indicators to fire off in Metastock. We built some extra coding in there, so it's almost like having me looking over your shoulder um, with uh, some of these uh, strategies now. Because now it's like, well, yeah, I could take the trade there, but I'll tell you, normally I won't do that for myself, um, you know, because it's moved too far away from the last signal bars. Uh, it went ahead and pushed up and then pulled back, and it's taken a little bit longer to resume. Whereas normally, hey, I want it to push up, pull back, and fire off pretty darn quickly. Push up, pull back, fire off quickly. I want to see that energy. I want to see that excitement. I want to see that enthusiasm to look for the continuation trades. But these are momentum shift breakout trades. And I said they're after we pull back and push back up against the, uh, the, the short term uh, highs, that's where we're looking to identify those trades. So then we took this whole concept to another new level. My inventory retracement bar trade. This is something I've written about in many international magazines, and uh, it's pretty awesome stuff. Well, the problem is that um, you know a lot. It's it, it, a lot of people don't have this programmed into their platforms, but for Metastock, we actually have done that. So what is it? It's a price action based continuation trade. Um, and when is it? Uh, when do I use it? It's most effective in trending markets. Uh, how do I identify? Looking back over the last 20 periods, where a signal bar uh, for signal bars, where the open and the close are approximately 45% or more off their high in an uptrend, or 45% or more off the low in a downtrend. So ask yourself, how much wick is showing? Is it approximately 45% or more? Where is my entry? It's typically one tick, one cent, one pip above or below that signal bar use the same normal trailing stop uh, strategy we talked about earlier. Where's the stop loss? One tick, one cent, one pip below the low or the high of the signal bar or a predetermined loss value, which for swing trades is that channel that I was going ahead and showing you. Remember uh, the concept of rocket fuel, if it's moved a large range quickly, the breakout is more likely to fail. Diverse applications for this, such as stocks, uh, options, futures, forex, Two-minute charts, hourly charts, daily charts, weekly charts. Uh, trail your entries to reduce the risk of reversion to the mean. And trade in the direction of the Pro Trader Pack Elite in Metastock, or as a, which is well di identified more so than any other platform out there, or as a very basic alternative, the 45-degree uh, angle, 20-period exponential moving average. Okay, so. What we're looking for in a downtrend here, I'm looking for these bars where the market's going down, we open up, we trade down first, and then we come back off the lows, and, and we look where the high is, where the low is, and we ask ourselves, is the tail, is the tail 45% or more uh, wick? And as you can see here, it absolutely is. This is from here to here is the, there, it's at least, it's almost 50% there, it's certainly 45% or more. So you see here's the low, here's the high, are we 45% or more off the low? We, and the answer is yes. And then right here, same thing, there's, you know, here's the low right here, here is the high, are we 45% or more tail on the bottom side? We absolutely are. And then this one here, of course, very obviously, is like 95% tail. Um, and so the um, you know everybody can spot these, but these ones right here, it's great to have the system go ahead and identify them because you know when people are doing this, especially on an intraday basis, it's great to have like the Metastock software pop up the alerts for it, which is something nobody else has currently uh, in their software at, at the time of this uh, video here. So. Um, 
With that being said, uh, in an uptrend, we're looking for just the opposite. So we have an uptrend. Now we're looking for 45% or more off the high. See, here's what's happening with these. The reason why we want to find these bars, whether it's an uh, intraday trade, a, a daily uh, uh, chart, a weekly chart, we're looking where one or more institutions has not only stopped the market from going up, but actually started to drive the market back down. That's what we're looking for here, gang. That's important. Okay, now most people are going to think, oh, well, we should short it then. Well, what I'm actually looking for, remember, we're, I'm a trend trader, and I'm looking for with trend trades, ideally. Well, I travel all over the world, and I have yet to find a full-time counter-trend trader only that's truly successful, and I've met a lot of traders. So counter-trend, that's a tough gig. Um, so with that being, and that's an understatement. So with that being said, what I'd like to do is actually see them if once that one or more institutions' inventory is dried up, now the market's free to go back on board the original direction. That's really what we're looking for there. Okay, so. Let's take a look at a weekly chart of Apple. All right, so here's a, uh, a, a bar. There's one of those bars. It's 45% or more off the low. Notice that what ended up happening was the market ended up going up, coming back down, but then staying right at that level for two more weeks right here and right here, and initially went up off this before it came there and settled. There was so much inventory to buy. There was so much aggressive buying that the market actually had to sit there for two weeks, but then look what happened after it uh, broke through that low. It whooshed down about thirty dollars in a week at that time. Okay, now the, uh, the over and over again, you're going to see us. So I, I like to show this chart because um, this is one of those charts that I show my institutional clients, but also my retail clients, because I actually went through this whole thing live back in my free nightly videos when it happened. So it's you know it's a record of you know something I talked about uh, at that time, and um, then this is the daily chart version version of this and you'll see so we had a trend down all my indicators were firing off my fast trigger my core trigger everything was firing off there we broke down below and whooshed down the hatch it went then it went ahead and it broke down below here and whooshed down the hatch it went now one question I get a lot of times I'll just address it now that uh, people ask is do you just keep adding in your position adding in your position every time you get a new signal no uh, I take the original signal and I go ahead and I trail that down so if I'm in one position that's just an indication to keep staying in my position if I get fresh cells um, until I, my stop gets hit then I wait for a new signal to fire off before getting into a new trade because the trend is your friend till the bend in the end and the problem is if you go ahead and um, keep adding in adding in well see so you, you take uh, one position here, you take another position here, you take a couple more positions down here, what are you doing? You're basically getting heavier down here, and the trend is your friend till the bend of the end. The further it goes, the more likely it is to stop and reverse, okay? So just a little tidbit there. So let's go ahead and take a look at Tesla now um, during its meteoric rise. There's your inventory retracement bar. There's your inventory retracement bar. There's your inventory retracement bar, right? And then you see that's on the weekly basis. Then on the daily basis, you see numerous entry and re-entry opportunities as well. Now, I've intentionally not marked them with the uh, uh, the trading software because the trading software makes it so much easier. You don't even have to think about it. Um, these were actual trades that I took during trading competition over in France. Uh, so the, this was gold. The market was coming down. Uh, we broke down below this level and whooshed down the hatch it went. Okay. Uh, this uh, was another gold one here where the market went ahead and was pushing down. You could see it was 45% or more off the low. Look what happened. When it broke down below that level, what did it do? Whooshed to the downside. Then there was another one went to the downside again okay so these were some of the trades I was taking at that time you know on an intraday basis but if this is a swing trade chart it's the same thing that we're looking at and that's why I'm trying to make sure everybody understands there today so great stuff you know whether it's crude oil gold stocks it's, it's all the same stuff Forex um, and uh, so now with this so this gives you a little bit of insight what we're looking at okay hopefully everybody can spot them a little bit faster already Let's go ahead and take a look at these now with the Metastock indicators, all right? So you'll see all these ones here that say IRB are the actual signals that fire off. What happens is once these happen, so here's your IRB, then it went ahead and went above and it fired off, okay? This one was an IRB, got above there, fired off. This was an IRB, got above there, 
and then it fired off over here. So what's really nice is you don't have to sit there and squint and stare and, and, and look for these things now. You can go ahead and just let the system pop them up for you when they've fired off, which is really nice. Um, it, it really gives a huge advantage using the Metastock software. So let's talk about now reverse inventory retracement bars. So a reverse inventory retracement bar, it's basically the same thing. It's a, a continuation trade. Um, it's most effective in trading markets. The big differences that we're going to have um, is, in fact, let's, let's cover the rest of the same things. It's you know the it's same exit strategy. Uh, the stop loss strategy is the same, especially for swing traders. It's down below those green channels. Um, you know, intraday traders we use the speed lines or the twenty period EMA. All the other things down below are the same, and they also are in the um, uh, Pro Trader Pack Elite. Uh, those reverse inventory retracement bars are something that is more re reserved for my paying students as well. Um, so it's really great, um, you know, to get you guys access to something like that within the uh, software. So what happens is um, we have now what we're looking for is we have an uptrend in place. This is a reverse inventory retracement bar. Now you recall the last time we were looking to, if you did an uptrend, we were looking to go uh, long if it broke out above. But now with a reverse inventory retracement bar, we actually want that 45% or more off the low in the uptrend. We want 45% or more off the low in the uptrend. Again, 45% or more off the low. So here's what's happening. Basically, these are fake out bars on an intraday, daily, or weekly basis that are happening these are those bars that make you guys not get into trades. You open the market opens up, it goes down first, breaks your will to take a trade on an intraday basis, daily basis, or weekly basis, and then it fires back off. And next thing you know, you're watching it go up, up, up without you, but you didn't get into the trade because it opened up and went against you first. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're identifying these trades, um, and then I'm looking to go long. Now I tend to go long a little bit more aggressively. I go long at the close of this bar. I go long at the close of this bar, at the close of this bar, at the close of this bar. But for the average small out retail trader, they want to take a little bit of risk off the table, in my opinion. Um, one of the best things they could do is perhaps go long one tick, one cent, one pip above the high of this bar. They're not going to go ahead and maximize their profit, but they are going to reduce some of the risk. So it's a trade off, right? When you want a little bit more confirmation, sometimes then that means you got to give up a little bit of the profit, but it can take away some of those those risks. Okay, so hope that goes ahead and makes sense to you. Um, and then in a downtrend, what we're looking for is just the opposite of before. Before in a downtrend, we were looking to go short. Well, you know, uh, down if it breaks down below the 45% off the low. Well, now what we actually want is we want it to open up. We want it to go up and then you know come back down, right? Um, and so what we're looking for is 45% or more off the highs in a downtrend. So this makes people think, oh, I better not short this. I better not short this. I, uh, this thing is going to go ahead and uh, start going up now. That's bad. Uh, or if you're long up above, it's like, yeah, yeah, go back up my way. Go back up my way only to have a turn right around and go back against you. So it sticks it to the people that are on the wrong side of the trade. These are the same things that happen to you guys on a daily, uh, intra an intraday, daily, or weekly basis with uh, your swing, day trades and swing trades. It happens all the time. I watch it happen. I get new people into my trade room all the time, and I, the first thing I got to do is slow them down and re-educate them on how this whole thing work happens. Um, and so the uh, so what we're looking to do now is go short at the close of that bar, short at the close of that bar, short at the close of that bar, short at the close of the bar. That's where I tend to do it. As a small lot retail trader, we look to go short one tick, one cent, one pip below the low of that bar. So those are reverse inventory retracement bars. So you recall this was the classic IRB I showed you just a little bit ago. Okay, classic IRB. Now. Let's go ahead and take a look where some of those reverse IRBs are. So now you can go short at the close of this bar, 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 or you can go short one tick, one cent, one pip below the low 
of those bars. What does this do? It gives you a whole bunch more trades you didn't have with just the original one. See, here's a reverse IRB, here's a reverse IRB, here's a reverse IRB. That's one, two, three extra ones on top of the one, two, three, four that you had here. So it almost doubled your, your trade number. Same thing here. You, here's another one, here's another one. This gave you a couple extra trade opportunities that you wouldn't have had with just the classic IRB. All right. So let's go ahead. You recall earlier I showed you this chart. Now uh, this has classic IRB. Let's see if we can identify some of those reverse IRBs. Well, there's one there, here, 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 here. Here, okay. So we originally had one, two, three of the uh, regular IRBs. This just added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more. So three classic IRBs, eight reverse IRBs. And I remember this, uh, boy. I tell you, chat rooms were alive with reversal. I mean, chat rooms were just keeping people out of trades in in this because what would happen was the market would pull back a little bit. And there, every one of these chat room gurus was like, oh, that's the end of Tesla, that's the end of Tesla. It turned right around, go back up, fire off another one of my inventory retracement bars, reverse inventory retracement bars, and then off to the races it went again and again and again. So the uh, the key is to identify these so that you are not you know, chasing your, your uh, tail, chasing your strategies uh, with these. You're ahead of the game and not following the, cl the crowd when they're saying stay away. You can look at it more objectively. Then you recall over here, the classic IRBs, okay. Now, can you spot a couple of the reverse IRBs? Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. Make sure you guys are seeing them all there. Perfect. All right. So the uh, th as we take a look, let's look at some of these here. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lots of extra reverse IRBs there, isn't there? Lots of extra opportunities. So the you'll see here very clearly what's happening now is by being able to spot these with the Metastock software, this is only available currently in the Metastock software. Um, and you got IRBs, you got reverse IRBs. You got momentum shift with trend. You got momentum shift breakouts, reverse IRBs, reverse, reverse, reverse. And remember what happens when you're looking at like this is Tesla as well. When you're looking at these swing trades, you, your stop loss, in my opinion, goes back behind this channel. Um, and uh, you, you, if your market's trend is strong, usually you're going to hold that channel and then back off to the races again. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So really great whether you're an options trader, a forex trader, stock trader, futures trader, it's all the same. Um, and uh, the question is whether you're an intraday trader or you're a swing trader. So this is really, really phenomenal, uh, the way we've put this together uh, with Metastock. And, and the way they pop up their alerts and everything is just great for this. Um, and not, this doesn't even uh, count some of the other things. but. Let's just go back and take a look since we did the event Thursday. Now you can go back and look at all the different signals, reverse IRBs, IRBs, momentum shift with trends, momentum shift with trend, reverse IRB, momentum shift with trend. This was just this past Thursday before we did the class. IRB, momentum shift breakout, reverse IRB, momentum shift with trend, with trend, with trend, reverse IRB, reverse, with trend, IRB, IRB, with trend, reverse IRB, IRB. You guys get the hint. Lots of entry and re-entry opportunities yeah, throughout that afternoon. And then here was yesterday morning, and if you were in my trading room, you were watching me actually short live shorting in the uh, NASDAQ yesterday morning. Can anybody see why I might be interested in shorting yesterday morning? Re uh, reverse IRB, reverse IRB, 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 momentum shift with trend, reverse IRB, IRB, momentum shift with trend, uh, reverse IRB, momentum shift with trend. Uh, reverse IRB. So really phenomenal stuff. And uh, it, it, so, you know, clearly you can see why we'd be focusing on that. So again, this isn't, you know, just theory. Um, you know, these are real opportunities that presented themselves. Uh, you know, if you had the software, you would have seen these things firing off. And then there's a whole other world of things 
that hasn't even been addressed yet, uh, which is, you know, uh, in addition to all these great signal strategy opportunities, then there's how to use my momentum bars and my my uh, fast trigger, my core trigger here, and my stochastics. So the stochastics that I identify, um, my half spikes, my full spike trades, the um, momentum-based uh, trades here, how we're looking for these things to be firing off, because as you can see, when you got these things firing off and you got these things firing off down below, wow. Those are some really statistically high probability trades from my perspective. So uh, what's really great is uh, to see that confluence. And so um, you know, Jeff is going to tell you more about that uh, in just a few moments. Uh, but really, this is a phenomenal package of bringing all these different tools together. Uh, you know, and these are tools that I use. These are tools that I developed, and that only Metastock uh, in these in the current form, the way this is being displayed to you today, has access to. So if you're a Metastock user. You're, you know, you're in the good position here this morning. So what I'll do is have Jeff tell you a little bit more about this so that you can get access to these. And also, I got a special training class on how to use these different things next week. Um, so Jeff can tell you about that as well. So looking forward to having you guys uh, be a part of that. Um, and uh, so very good. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's answer. Uh, what, how do you use the multiple time frames? We'll talk about that, Bill, next uh, week at the uh, the class um, because obviously. So there's some really great ways to uh, look at the lower time frames, higher time frames. Part of that will be uh, using these speed lines here with that as well. So I'll show you some really cool strategies about that. Um, I'm not currently trading the Russell, not until the volume fully switches over to the new contract on the CME, which will likely be in a few weeks. Um, uh, during when the September uh, market, in September the markets will go to the December contract, and at that point the volume will roll over fully to the um, uh, you know the CME product likely, and so that's when we'd be looking at that. I'm re I'm really doing a lot more with other markets, um, you know, at this point till that volume rolls over. Okay. Um, so, anyways, great stuff getting there, and uh, Jeff, I'm going to turn it over to you to show them uh, how they can get access uh, to all this now. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, get the uh, screen shared over here and all that kind of stuff. Well, uh, great job, Rob. Really appreciate that. Um, what a great opportunity to kind of uh, spend some time with this. And uh, let me just make myself the presenter. I do want to show how this is all kind of pulled together and how the year or so that we spent working on this with Rob really kind of came together. And one of the things that Rob said so well, and uh, let's go ahead and kind of get the screen share going as well, is uh, we did kind of pull together all of his indicators. I can show you how those work. I can show you how those kind of display on a chart, all of that kind of stuff that's all ready to go. Uh, in addition to that, we actually programmed in all of his signals as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch over to the, this is the Dow. You guys know I like to watch the Dow in, uh, during uh, all the time. I always am looking at the Dow and uh, the DIA uh, and uh, so this is kind of how it did on Thursday. Uh, I'm going to kind of break down the elements of this chart and kind of give you an idea of how it works. Number one, you'll notice right here on uh, Thursday at about 9.45 a.m. we started to color this bar uh, red, marking it as an uh, inventory retracement bar, uh, and blue. We mark the retracement bars either with a, a red or a blue coloration uh, when they happen on the chart. So I don't want you to get confused. This IRB signal that we're generating here is basically because it met the criteria when we covered here. Here you have the bar. Here it penetrated. It issued the signal. This signal was automatic on the chart automatic, meaning it'll pop up an alert when that happens. You can have it play a sound when that happens. And if there's a few markets that you want to be able to follow, you can even have it send you an email when that happens. Okay. Down here, we've got all of his indicators that are available as well. We've got the Hoffman Fast Trigger, we've got the Hoffman Core Trigger, and we've got the Hoffman Oscillators as well. Now, you'll notice we color code this, and I just want to talk a little bit about what the color coding means. If it is red, as it was uh, Thursday morning, indicating you, indicating we might be kind of going into a, a, basically means that it's bearish and that it's increasing. You'll notice it'll also go light green uh, here as it kind of started to pull back up. It turned light green. That means it's bearish and decreasing. Okay. If uh, it goes up, and we kind of have to go back to see that. If it's blue, it means right now that the momentum is bullish and increasing, and if it's purple, it means it's bearish and decreasing. Okay. 
this is his fast trigger and his core trigger. The, they're very similar in terms of the way that they're calculated. The fast trigger is obviously just faster than the core trigger. And I believe it's been a while since we coded, but that's the main difference. And uh, Rob will tell you that you want to put more emphasis on the core trigger uh, than on the fast trigger. Okay. Down here we've got the oscillators. You can use those for, as a type of a bit of a reversal type. Uh, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, let me not misstate this. I've got this kind of uh, in a PowerPoint slide, but very carefully prepared. The Hoffman oscillators are going to allow you to measure over, bought, over, sold. If you're above 80 during a downtrend, a like re reception in the trend is likely to follow. And if you're below 20 during an uptrend, you're likely going to have a resumption in that. Uh, trends. So that's how you read them. Uh, obviously, every time you think, uh, you uh, uh, get a signal, it's going to generate that uh, alert on the chart. That's why you see the inverse retracement bar, the reverse in uh, uh, it, the reverse inventory retracement bar, uh, and then the momentum shift with trends. These actually automatically come up. And like I said before, if uh, you uh, it, if you want, it can, the Metastack program can pop up an alert. You can set that to play a sound for you, and you can also even have it send you an email in case you're not at your desk, and uh, that's very, very nice. In addition to that, what we did was we came in here and put together a bit of a commentary system. The commentary, I like to kind of equate that to a little bit of having Rob right there with you to kind of tell you, uh, advise you of what's going on. So. By default, this is going to go to the very last bar, uh, which was 4 p.m. on 8.18. We'll go ahead and move this uh, to this inventory retracement bar so you can see exactly what would have shown up during that day. First of all, what you're going to see is you're going to see kind of what I was telling you about these uh, breakdowns of the different indicators. You've got your trend bias right now is bearish. Every time it's bearish, our trend bias, we're going to be looking to go short, not long. Again, the trend is your friend. You want to trade with that trend, right? So that's why you're only going to get short signals while the trend is bearish, okay? You're going to see that the core trigger is bullish uh, and decreasing, and your fast trigger is bearish and increasing. So we've got a little bit of a dashboard here that you can just kind of glance at and see what the core indicator is actually telling you. Now, because we actually fired off a signal on this bar, we're going to try and give you an advice in this commentary. This isn't a replacement for kind of the courses or anything like that. I would recommend, you know, Rob does such a great job and he's got such a great reputation that you actually kind of learn as much as you can about this method, right? But here we try and kind of remind you about what's going on. Bearish inventory retracement bar is signal to potential short opportunity. If you're interested in taking advantage of this signal, you should look to place a short trade. Okay, here's what the inventory retracement bar is: a price action brace breakout trade. It is most effective in trending markets. Investors can tie this to, and just some more advice. I'm going to not kind of go ahead and read through all of that, but what we're telling you is exactly where you should be kind of taking a look at placing a signal on that chart. That's very very helpful, especially as you're learning the concepts of kind of what these are and how to trade them. It's going to kind of help you remind it. This is what I would call a full integration into meta stock. So um, you're welcome to kind of put this on a chart. Look at how well it's done just the last couple of days. You, uh, again, you want to trade in the direction of the trend. And just, just the amount of kind of movement we've had to the downside. Just taking kind of the trades, that, uh, looking at this, you're going to do pretty well with it. Okay. Uh, how does it work when it goes up? Well, as it's starting to go up, you're going to get a lot of really good trades as well. It really does. One of the things that I really like about this is it does help you take advantage and understand where the trend is and be able to take, maybe you didn't get this one, okay, but then you decided to come in and get this one. It's going to give you a lot of opportunities to enter or re-enter into a trend that's established. And I, th I think that's one of the keys to kind of the way Rob ties this all together for you. As I said a few minutes ago, I'm kind of getting all over the place here, but it is a full in implementation into Metastock, which means if I want to go in and kind of find opportunities, maybe, um, maybe Dow is a little bit flat or a little bit stagnant and I want to kind of find some opportunities, I can use the Metastock scanner. Okay, and because I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Metastock, but we power our program with Reuters data. 
And what that means is if I want to come in here and find a Hoffman setup, I can either run a scan on a Hoffman inventory retracement signal or a Hoffman momentum signal, or I could do both if I wanted to. But literally, the data that we cover covers anything that you might be interested in. We cover, if you just look at this big, huge number right here, 381,847 instruments. That's going to include Forex. It's going to include futures. It's going to include London. It's going to include the Middle East. It's going to include Africa. It's going to include India. Uh, it just anything that you might be interested in. And one of the things that they did is they organized this in a fairly intuitive manner. So for example, if you are in Europe and you want to kind of implement this thing on London, go ahead and click on here and you'll be able to just see all the exchanges that are kind of in Europe. You'll be able to click on London and you'll be able to find it right there. Such an easy way to kind of go in and navigate it. If you're interested in futures, you want to run a scan against futures. Just click in here, find the market you want to trade against. I'm going to do a real quick scan here, and the reason I want to do a quick scan is because we're doing this live, uh, but let's just do a real quick scan for the Dow 30. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this inventory retracement signal and the momentum signal. I'm going to run it against the Dow Industrial on a daily basis. I'll go ahead and start that as a scan, and it's just going to go through. It's uh, going to take maybe a, a few seconds. This is a lot faster when you're not actually broadcasting because of the bandwidth intensity, but you'll notice it actually didn't take that long anyway. So I'll go ahead and click on the reports. Let's see if we had anything. None of the DAOs actually signaled the momentum signal yesterday. That's fine. Let's go ahead and get rid of it. I'll go ahead and click on the report. Home Depot, the way you read this, okay, so all of the 29 stocks from yesterday in the DAO, all of them but one, the 30th, actually didn't have a signal, so we're not going to look at them. We're not going to focus on them. Meta stocks about focusing on opportunity. If we want to look here, Home Depot had an inventory retracement by short, or an inventory retracement bar short, I should say, and then we could kind of go in and look at that. And you could, of course, do that with Forex pairs. It doesn't matter what you're interested in trading. The technology is there. You just say, here's the scans I want to run. Here's the list I want to run it. And Metastack literally, to borrow something from one of our customers, takes out the trash for you. It allows you to just focus on the stuff that has an opportunity that's actionable that you can implement on now. So hopefully that gives um, a good... Caesar, welcome. I see your question. I'm going to get to it. So um, hopefully that gives you a good idea of how it all works, how it works in Metastack. If you're not familiar with Metastock, I don't want to talk about Metastock. This is Rob Hoffman's class. But there are a few things I will tell you about it. Metastock's been rated number one in its price category for, as of this year, 24 years in a row. That means every single year since, if I'm doing the right math right in my head, uh, and this early on a Saturday morning, maybe, maybe not, every year since 1993 or 1994, it's been voted by the readers of Stocks and Commodities Magazine number one. So you do need Metastock to run this, obviously. Uh, the way I kind of would explain that to customers is uh, Rob Hoffman's stuff is the GPS system, and Metastock's kind of the car that just kind of gets you to where you're going. It's the engine that kind of runs all of this. Okay. As Rob said a little bit, here's the, here's the setups that we've got programmed in. So these are what that means is these are the alerts that you're going to get on a real-time basis. These are the things that you can get alerted by email if they happen. And these are the things that you can scan for using the Metastock Explorer. Okay? And uh, so those are the things that it's looking for, the actual triggerable events. Okay? Uh, a lot of this stuff I already talked about. I don't really like to work a lot in PowerPoint. I like to kind of show you how it works in the software and how it runs. Okay. Uh, did talk about that. Okay. We did talk about scanning, showed you real time how that does. Okay. Normally, this thing uh, 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 costs $129 a month. I'm going to tell you guys the price on this thing is going to go up. Initially, we set this up and we started to, uh, to sell this at an introductory price rate. We wanted to get you guys up and running. Uh, what we're kind of, and uh, Rob's been talking to me a little bit about it. We're going to be kind of raising the price on this to kind of match the other indicators. It's better than the other indicator packages that are out there on the market today. 
But normally up until this point, on an introductory pricing for like a year or so, we've done it for $129 a month. We're going to do one last special. This is only available. You can't get it online. It's only available until next Friday, 824. So you're definitely going to want to do that. Uh, it's 99 bucks a month. If you lock in that price, that'll be your price forever. Okay, $99 a month. What we're going to include with that is if you need a subscription to Metastock, we'll include a Metastock subscription trial. We're going to include um, Unleash the Power of Metastock, which is a, a course that you can go through that talks about all of the tools in Metastock, the testing, the ability to run scans, the ability to run explorations, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it has a little bit of a workbook that you can do, and then several videos that go along with it. Of course, you're going to get the Pro Trader Pack Elite, and uh, we'll also give you access to data. One of the things, and I think this is actually worth it by itself, we're going to do a customer only training session, okay, Wednesday, August 23rd at 5 p.m. And what we're going to do is Rob is going to sit down and he's going to kind of go into a lot of detail about how these methods are actually working. So basically for a hundred bucks, not only do you get access to his add-on, you're also going to be able to sit down with him for an hour. And the thing is, is you, you know, as traders, I love good risk reward. And so for me to be able to sit down with Rob, I've been fortunate, I, like I said at the very top of this thing, uh, I've been fortunate because I've been able to work with this top trader verifiable top trader uh, for the course of a, over a year, right? But for, for 100 bucks, if you just paid for the class to kind of go in and see the, him talk and kind of give you some good insight, I would say that by itself would be worth it. I'll also do a section where I kind of talk about kind of how to set up your indicators within the platform, how to make things easier for you, how to run scanning, that kind of stuff. But Rob's actually going to sit down and, in a live session, actually go through that. If you can't make the session, we are going to record it. We're going to make it available for you as long as you're a Pro Trader Pack Elite customer. And let's talk about risk reward. If you don't like it, you're on a monthly subscription. You can cancel it at any time. I would keep in mind, though, that the pricing is probably going to change. It's probably going to go up. So I would encourage you to lock in that pricing, and I'd encourage you also to keep it. Okay. Uh, again, this isn't available online. Uh, it's uh, you have to call to get it. It's 800-882-3040 is the best way to get a hold of our sales team. If you're international, give it. Uh, you can chat online with us. Uh, if you have questions, if you want us just to send some information to you about this, uh, chat online with us at metastock.com forward slash sales chat. So. Uh, Caesar said, is this the same indicator that Rob talked about via Metastock about a month ago? Uh, it is. Um, the one thing that I kind of am very proud of, and I talked about this with Ro about Rob, and I one of the things, and maybe it's because I'm not, but one of the things I really respect about Rob is his attention to detail. And I remember um, how many weekly meetings we'd have with Rob where he'd sit and work with my programmer to make sure that this was perfect. So yeah, this is the same indicator sets that we were talking about a month ago, Caesar. Thanks for using Metastock and thanks for coming this morning as well. Uh, Scott says you and Rob always do a great uh, job. I love the product. Thanks for using it, Scott. And Scott, thanks for using Metastock as well. That's what I have for you guys. Uh, if there's anything I uh, can do for you, Caesar, yes. That's still available too, um, and I would take advantage of that if you want to. Okay. Um, I lost my train of thought. It's not unusual. Uh, I really appreciate you guys coming today. Rob, I really appreciate your time. Um, I know it's a Saturday. Uh, and um, in any case, that seems thank like you. it's the end of the question. Yep, yeah. thank you very much. Great to be here. And thanks a lot for those great comments that people made. I really appreciate that. And Jeffrey, certainly great to be here with you. And uh, I'll let you unwrap up uh, and have the last word. But it was great to be here with you. And I appreciate all those great comments that are coming in. So uh, welcome to our student family. For those of you that said you're getting it right now. And we'll look forward to uh, working with you in the special class next week. We'll see you next weekend. Thanks for coming, guys. And um, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I think I'm going to go fishing. See you later.